Computers are not simply inventions made by smart people. They are the products of a technical rational tradition that has existed in the West for centuries. This tradition is grounded in one important idea. It is this. We can use a step-by-step -step methodology to achieve a certain result. This idea is so pervasive that we rarely think about it. But it surrounds us every day. Consider this magazine cover. The 123 plan for amazing hair. Or this website, 15 steps to success guaranteed. The idea is that following a procedure guarantees a specific outcome. That's exactly how computers work. They use procedures to promise certain results. We call this a formula. At its heart, technology sees everything in terms of formulas. Formulas are powerful. Imagine what it would be like to discover a formula that guaranteed that you could obtain a job, find the perfect mate, or create an important work of art. However, as artists, we know that art making is not a formulaic activity. That's why instructors often provide guidelines. Unlike a formula, a guideline does not guarantee a result. It's more like an outline for learning. We now seemingly have a paradox. On the one hand, computers are formula-driven machines. On the other hand, art is non-formulaic. The two don't seem to go together. And in fact, for decades, many people assumed that technology was inherently non-creative. Technology was seen as sterile, scientific, inhuman. But developments in technology have shown us otherwise. We know that technology can be used to support creative efforts in art, design, video, music and many other areas. This is the question. How do art and science mix? Many works of modern art are analogous to applied science. Scientists take the basic elements of the world and then combine them into new forms. This kind of science leads to the discovery of new medicines, alloys, and new materials. Modern art is similar when it involves synthesizing visual qualities into new visual products. René Magritte's work is a good example. In this painting, La Grande Family, the qualities of the sky are transposed onto the shape of a bird. Like a scientist, Magritte has created a hybrid creature in which the qualities of one thing are grafted onto the form of another. Merit Oppenheim did something similar with her piece Breakfast in Fur. Here, fur is transposed onto a cup and saucer to create an engaging, and perhaps disturbing, new form. Johannes Itten's approach to teaching was similarly scientific. Like other Bauhaus instructors, he distilled visual phenomena to component elements like line, texture, shape, color. The task of the artist was to synthesize these elements into something new. In these conceptions of creativity, artistry becomes a kind of mad science. Technology helps with the shaping, grafting, mixing, production and distribution. Photoshop is indeed like a photo lab. A laboratory for hybridizing form. When Mary Shelley wrote Frankenstein in the early 1800s, she foreshadowed important concerns about modern art and science. In Frankenstein, Shelley questioned what happens when we become preoccupied with creating new forms. We know that science creates incredible engineering advances and miracle medical cures. But science also potentially leads to loss and destruction. Frankenstein is the story of modern hubris. It is a warning about what happens when humanity takes too much pride in its creative accomplishments. But what about art? Is there anything wrong with creating never-before-seen landscapes and creatures in Illustrator or Photoshop? Are virtual creations examples of human ingenuity? Or are they, like Frankenstein, fraught with potential negative consequences?